Dr. Sean. Chef. What are you making? Today I'm going to try baking. I'm not a big baker, but we're going to make a tart with a maple syrup cream filling. I'm from Quebec, so that's uh, why I'm choosing to use the maple syrup. Do you like maple tarts? I absolutely have ma love maple syrup. I've never had a maple tart. Let, 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 let me get this. You have never eaten a maple tart, you have never baked, and you're going to make me a maple tart. It's going to look good. I don't know if this is going to be your typical maple tart, Chef, but it's going to taste good. I hope so. Thank you, Chef. When I really love something, whether it's for school or it's for cooking, I study hours every week. It's a tart with a maple pastry cream, a meringue on top, and blueberry coulis. So refresh my memory. You're not a baker, right? Never made a tart in my life. It's pretty amazing. Thank you so much. Just the way the flavors all come together. The tart is crispy, it's well balanced, it's not too sweet. Great job. Thank you so much. Chef Alvin, the man who does not like desserts. Why does everybody think I don't like desserts? <laughs> is it because I'm not a sweet guy? <laughs> wow. Sean, you might have converted me. It's got very nice balance. It's sweet, but I can taste the maple. Beautifully done on pie crust, it's crispy. The meringue could have been improved. If you get a stiffer meringue, you can probably get a bit more char in it. Overall, you deliver. You deliver. Well done. Thank you. I see red wine. Why not put red wine in a red velvet cupcake? What you doing? What you doing? Red wine and cupcakes might be really weird. I'm hoping that won't hurt me. The wine? Yeah. I have trouble with the concept of it, but it's it's very innovative. It's risky. Oh, oh this isn't my station. <laughs> oh, sh I put flour in there instead of sugar. I start losing focus. <sighs> I have to start from scratch, and time's ticking. Mary, do you have any white sugar there? Yep. Uh, Are you almost out? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm a giver in the kitchen. Baking powder. Who's got baking powder handy? I do. If somebody needs something, I'll give it to them. Thank you. Of course. Just give it back, man. I will. <laughs> I don't want to win that way. You have 45 minutes! Is it? I have celiac. I'm not going to be able to taste my batters. I'm just going to have to go off sight and smell. Jacqueline. Hi, Chef. How comfortable are you with baking? It's not what I usually do, but I'm feeling OK. So you have the confidence? I think I do. You think you do? I think I do. I'm not convinced. I know. Are you convinced? Not. I'm not really convinced. You got to believe in yourself. Without confidence, you won't go very far. Yes, thank you. OK. Five minutes. Better start decorating. Vince could be the first one out of the gate with his decorating. Colors look fun. The piping requires a fine hand, a little finesse, in order for it to look absolutely beautiful. And then you can just put the finishing jewels to it to make it really stand out and look special. Damn, the shaky hands. My hands, they're so sweaty, I can't grip the piping bag properly. This is ridiculous. I'm very worried about Jacqueline. Ah. Uh... 30 second left, come on, come let's on, get guys. it guys. You can do it. Oh my god. I'm gonna drizzle a little chocolate on these. Look at the meringue on Mary's cupcake. It's absolutely beautiful. Keep going to the buzzer, right to the end. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and off! Good job, guys. Good job, guys. Good job. Good job. I'm getting a little emotional because my cupcakes didn't quite hit that spot where I wanted them. Well done. This was not an easy challenge. And now it's time to see how you did. Jacqueline, please bring up your cupcake tower. This cupcake tower is what separates me from winning and being an accountant. I don't want to go home. The purple ones are a lavender-infused cupcake with vanilla Swiss buttercream. The yellow is a lemon cupcake with a lemon buttercream. And the red wine velvet cupcake with a cream cheese icing, toasted walnuts, and crumble on the top. Red wine is something I've never seen in a cupcake, so this is the first for me.
This is absolutely delicious. I love the innovation. <laughs> you know the history of red velvet cake. The original one was made with red beets. And the red wine, it's a perfect replacement because I get that spiciness, earthiness. Now, there are little flaws. These little tiny crumbs, I don't think it really needs it. It makes it look dirty. Overall, I love it. The lavender. My least favorite herb is lavender. So this has to be pretty sensational. I'm just hoping it's not too perfumey when you eat it. This is a very sophisticated cupcake. Really well balanced. What does this mean to you? It means that I actually have a chance to make my dreams come true. I think you have a lot of doubt. I saw it happening when you were cooking. I think sometimes when something this great happens that it can't really actually be happening because I've never really had things easy. Unless you start believing you're not gonna get very far. I mean, accountants don't usually make beautiful tower of cupcakes like this. Please go back to your station. I didn't realize that at first, but I do think that this competition for me is more than just cooking. I just can't picture myself sitting in an office. I want to be here. As the protein, which one do you feel more comfortable using, shrimp or pork? pork. In this challenge, the first few moments is probably the most important because you're setting the strategy out for the balance of the 45-minute cook. Let's go with shrimp. Shrimp. We can do this. We can do this. When I think of Julia, I think of a calm, cool, and collected woman. I'm pretty loud. I'm pretty effervescent. The yin to my yang. I feel super confident. This is our chance to shine. <laughs> First thing I would do is determine who the leader is. I think you need to have one leader. I don't think you can have two people that are having a power struggle. Can you listen to me? Yeah. Come to a pasta salad. I've got an amazing plan, and I just need to convince Jennifer to go with it. I can make pasta, and I'm yeah. fast with pasta. Yeah? Yes. Is that what you want to do? Yes. Let's do that. Okay, it's gonna, it's I trust you. I am so excited to work with Terry because he's an absolute genius. I am trusting my partner here, and I'm ready to work my way to the winner's circle. Oh, the irony. I'm <laughs> Italian, and you're making the pasta. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> This is so fun. I love it. I'm having fun. <laughs> Julia, April yes. Lee. How are you doing, guys? Thank you. I'm well, thanks. So, what dish are you cooking? We are doing a peach glazed grilled shrimp with an Asian slaw. I definitely think this is our opportunity to show the other home cooks that uh, we're forced to be reckoned with. All right, I'll leave you get on with it. Good luck. Thanks, Chef Michael. So, we're going to boil the pasta in broth. Yeah. Just to inject some flavor yeah. in it. Terry, what are you making here? We're making a bow tie pasta, and we've got some very beautiful herbs and vegetables to support it. Who's deciding what happens here? Terry's actually leading by storm, and I'm totally OK with that. Let me ask you a question now. Sure. Who's going to be to blame if this dish is a bit of a disaster? If this dish is a disaster, it's both of our faults. I look forward to seeing it. Shake, shake, shake. April Lee and Julia, they are perfect harmony right now. Those look beautiful. I think they'll be really good to help Julia. us with our height. I right? love them. Yeah, I love them. Ah! Oh, shoot. Terry is basically dictating everything to Jennifer. Can you chop this finely for me? Oh, yeah. He's leading the charge without doubt. It's a little bit under. Oh, my gosh, I think it's beautiful. It's actually cooked to perfection. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one, heads up! <laughs> I'm trembling in excitement and happiness that they called our name. It's an Asian slaw with a peach grilled prawn and a parsnip fry on top. And who took the lead in this creation? I'd say it was really even. We both had as much say in every element. We made a great team. Visually, I like the composition. All right. It's really good. The shrimp's perfectly cooked, and the peach is sweet, so it has a great counterbalance to the heat. Really outstanding. That slow dressing is wonderful. 
it makes a perfect foundation for such a delicious shrimp dish. Well done. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. I'm feeling that the other home cooks are noticing Julia and I for the very first time. Good job. It's a really good feeling. This is prawn farfalle pasta salad with pistachios, peas, and kale. The colors just jump out. It's fantastic. I noticed you had soy sauce in your station. Yes, chef. We used that to marinate the shrimp. You don't typically see soy sauce and Italian food together. Let's see how it tastes. never had a dish that tastes this way. This is a very new taste for me. That is delicious. It's an original. <laughs> the soy gives you that great salt component. And then you have these little hits of the pistachio, the kale. You're a very clever man. Thank you, Chef. Jennifer, you were very smart, too, to follow Terry's lead. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. I should have judged today that I'm a serious home cook, and I came here to win. be more happy. Hello, Chef. Hey, Chef. We are making a beet salad with a uh, fennel salad on top, uh, some ricotta cheese, and some toasted hazelnuts are going to go on top of that. Do you call this a beet salad? I mean, look at this. It's like little paper. You think it's too thin? We have extra beets. But I don't think you have enough time to do that. 10 minutes, I'm doing it. Beets are too thin. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll just make a few thick one, Matthews, to go on, on the bottom. Veronica, I don't know if we're going to have time for that. We're just going to have to improvise. Time is running out. Veronica tries to cut more beets thicker on a mandolin. I'm leading. Ow! Oh. Oh. Medic! And she cuts herself. Uh-oh. Oh, we have two minutes to plate this. Blood is gushing everywhere. Our captain is down. Just keep cooking! I always thought people that don't use guards on mandolins are idiots. I'm an idiot. Two minutes left of plating. I look over and there's nothing on those platters. Matthew, Matthew's just gonna run with what we have. Okay. Julia, I need your help here okay. right now. I, I don't know who's gonna take the lead now, but while Veronica's down, she's still screaming directions to us from the sideline. Uh, Matthew, just run with what, our original plan. I have to do something, I have to step up. It all have to look like this. Okay. Matthew, are you still on time? Yes. We're trying to make Veronica's vision come to life. The blue team is also struggling to assemble their beet dish. Oh, these are all weird sizes. Just, just go with it. I'm a perfectionist. If I put out a plate that I'm not completely happy with, I think it might break my heart. Good job, guys. Looks great. Get it away. Wait. Okay. Is that a good guy? Where's the reduction? Good job, guys. There's reduction? no reduction. The last second, someone yells out, balsamic. Put it on, put it on, come on. Just drizzle over, drizzle over. Go, 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 Keep go, 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 go. And they're whisked away to service, and I have no idea how they're going to go over. These look awesome. You are so great. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. This is my sister. She's back in Nigeria. I love my sister so much. I see the loves of my life. I am in this competition for my papa. And my two brothers, they're my life. Seeing grandma's face, I'm just elated. She's such a beautiful woman, and she's inspired me so much. <laughs> I don't know where the judges found this picture of my dad. He's my biggest supporter, and I'm going to show him that I can do this. My dad loves green tea, and my mom loves chestnut cream. So I'm going to mix the two together and make a matcha roll cake. It's decorated at the batter level, and I don't think the judges have ever seen anything like it. What I'm about to do is practically impossible in an hour. I'm not sure I can do it, but that's what my dad taught me to do. Shoot for the stars, try your hardest, and that's what I'm going to do today. I'm not going to play it safe. The judges have accused me of not cooking from the heart on numerous occasions, and I'm going to prove them wrong. 20 minutes left! Oh, that smells so good. If they're having anything that's hot, that should be cooling at this point. Because you do not want to put a cool liquid on top of a hot cake. I need to get this in the blast chiller immediately. I can't put the chestnut cream onto a hot cake. Go, thank you. I need to wait, I need to wait, I need to wait. Close it, close it. Close it. Ah! Oh my god. Oh, the big fuzz. I've lost my cake. Oh god. Oh my god. This is a disaster. This is an absolute disaster. That has got to be heartbreaking. Michelle is still flustered, but I know she can salvage what's left of her cake. I'll get you ring molds. Oh, here we go. Oh, shoot. Veronica suggests to me to make a smaller cake. It won't be as 
elegant and as pretty, but uh, it's my only choice. That's okay, that's okay. I can't give up now. I want my kids to see how much of a fighter their mother is. We still do it. The last 10 minutes, it's all about the finishing touches. It's the filling, it's the stuffing, it's the layering of the icing. Mary right now has that laser beam focus. I need to show the judges that I'm the best baker here. <laughs> I want the judges to see that even though I'm not much of a baker, that I can still hold my own. I'm gonna go with as many layers as I can. I want this cake to be really high. I don't want it to fall over. <laughs> it's cold! <laughs> I got it! <laughs> One of the most difficult Japanese desserts that I executed it in an hour. Hey, Pele, you, you doing good? Oh, wow, that looks amazing. It's no Japanese roll cake. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, freak. <laughs> look, at, look at my <laughs> boop, boop, boop. <laughs> I am super proud. I know my family would be super proud. I'm just hoping all the flavors are there. It's a Japanese matcha roll cake with the chestnut cream in the center. It is impressive. Thank you, chef. I don't even know how to do these patterns myself, I'll be honest. I don't know how you pull that off. It's extraordinary. <laughs> Thank you, chef. There's a perfect balance between the chestnut cream and the green tea and that white chocolate crunch. Outstanding. Thank you, Chef. Extremely light, and the sponge is incredibly moist. Did you do anything to the sponge to make it so moist? No, I just have a good recipe, and the base cell helped out. Extraordinary presentation, technique. I can't find anything to fault on this. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. My dad would be ecstatic to see me now. He would be so proud. 20 minutes! You have 20 minutes left! Oh, I think my link's a little bit tight here. Oh, no. Just split. So we lost one. Sorry, guys. I am a little bit worried about the red team because they are overstuffing the sausage. No! They're going to have a lot of problems separating it into links. It keeps splitting, guys. I'm starting to feel myself kick into panic mode. We're pretty behind, so we really got to get going. OK. Jacqueline's not at her best right now. I ripped another one. I'm just going to cry. I'm just freaking out. Okay, I'm officially taking myself off link duty. Jeremy, we're gonna switch out, man. We need to get motoring. We can't go with the pressure test, so we have to start pumping out sausages like nobody's business. The team that sells the most sausage plates will avoid the dreaded pressure test. Let's do this, man, come on. Looks good, we're good. This is a tricky challenge because you only have three members on each team, which means each member needs to do a lot of heavy lifting. We need a lot more potatoes, guys. Oops. Why is Matthew spending so much time on the onions? Ah, oops. Why is Matthew still at the onions? We need more than that, though, man, you know? Yep, yep, I yep. know. Speed is not really his forte. Good job, Aprilie. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Aprilie comes from a family that makes and smokes sausages, so that's a huge advantage. I'm the sausage queen! <laughs> you have five minutes left. A lot of people are lining up. I just added another 13 links in there. Good. Coming through with sausages. Terry. Yes? How's our sausages? I'm going to take them now. I smell burning. Oh, my goodness. Whoa. That's a good fire here. Take them out. Take them out. Take them out. All of my hard work on these sausages is going up in flame. Okay? What's happening, Terry? You got some fire. As you get those sausages off, put a bit of water on the bottom of the pan. You should be good. Good luck. Thank you, chef. I'm worried that we might not have enough sausages. You have one minute till service! Let's get ready for service, guys. It's gonna come real quick. I just need to season up this salad. Where's the soy sauce? The Master Chef Canada Oktoberfest sausage stalls are now open for business! Let's go! Time's up, guys. Time's up. Here they come. Oh, my gosh. People, check the chips. I'm coming. And enjoy. Have a good day. Mary, I need to see you. A guest just had this. Look at it. It is totally underdone. I'm so sorry. Not acceptable. No, I know that. I'm in charge of the sausages, and I gave someone 
raw meat. Let's get one plated up so I can run it out to the okay. guests. Okay. I'm so sorry, sorry. Chef. You're, I'm so sorry. Things are falling through the cracks, and I am devastated and embarrassed. You keep an eye on those sausages. Well, I just was trying to do chips, too, and no, I No, it's OK. Know. Mary, keep your head in the game. Mary is freaking out, but I'm just trying to comfort her. It'll be OK. We're going to finish hard. We're going to finish strong, OK? Yeah. I am turning into a mess, and I'm not paying attention. Good. Huh? Medic! Mary, what's going on? Are you OK? I beer made them really bad. I can feel it starting to blister. I am close to giving up. My skin feels like it's peeling off. It's OK, Mary. I got you. OK. I feel like if I give up now, my team will fall apart. And I can't let that happen. Let us know whatever you need. We got no, it. No, it's OK. I need to keep working and just deal with the pain later. Oh, yay, October fans! Woo! Woo! Two minutes. You have two minutes left. Hello. Hello again, actually, eh? We're back. It was that good. Lamb sausage is still available! The extremely loud lawyer oh, is screaming at people to come and eat our lamb sausages. But the blue team isn't the only one with a loud lawyer. Spicy beef sausages, come grab them. Hot spicy beef sausages. Honestly, you think you can out yell me? Hot spicy beef sausages, come grab them. Anything is left, there's still lamb sausages! Colonel Chris Hatfield. Wow. What? Oh my gosh! The first Canadian astronaut to walk in space. Space! <laughs> Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you. So I'm a pretty big Colonel Hadfield fan. Oh, my god. This man is the Canadian icon of space and science. He's like a spokesperson for everything I love. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Freeze dried everything. <laughs> In front of you are a selection of foods that were available to Colonel Hadfield during his missions in space. Dried fruit and nuts, freeze-dried vegetables, candied salmon, and freeze-dried beef. I've never cooked with space food, but I'm pretty sure that most of the other home cooks haven't either. This is going to be a little more difficult to elevate. I'm looking forward to seeing what we're all uh, going to pull off. <laughs> Today. I want to win because I want Colonel Hadfield to think I'm good enough to win, and I'm so excited, and I need to win. <laughs> These strawberries are just like little dust powders. So the first thing you have to do to reactivate some of these ingredients is to add some moisture to it. OK, chicken. Work your magic. Whether that is water, whether that is a little chicken stock, whether that's some white wine. On board the spaceship, there's this needle that sticks out of the wall and you take your package and you slide it over the needle and then you turn for the amount of water you want to put into it. Then you push either a lukewarm button or a hot button. That's about the best you can do as a space chef. Oh my goodness, this is a bit nerve-wracking. I've never cooked with many of these ingredients before. I actually really enjoy this challenge. It's weird, but it's interesting. I'm very good at mystery boxes. I've won before. The secret is cook what you love. I'm making what I would want to eat if I came back from space. I'm making congee, both with the dehydrated corn and the potato. Congee is a porridge that is savory that you normally put meats or vegetables into. This is what my mom always makes for me. I'm making a fresh pasta, a fresh linguine, and then I am going to use the chicken and broccoli. Cooking for Colonel Hatfield today, the pressure is on. I'm doing a fruit kaflutti with toasted nuts on it today. Some dried apricot. Check out these dried cranberries. A kaflutti is like a French custard pie. I wanted to be out of this world, intergalactic. 25 minutes. You have 25 minutes left. Today I'm making kind of like a, a salmon pie with a smoked salmon mousse. It's going to have layers of freeze dried green beans and smoked salmon. Oh, it smells so good. I'm the only one left in this competition who hasn't been called up for a mystery box, so it's time to get called up for a mystery box today. Five minutes. T minus five minutes, home cooks. Ah. Veronica looks like she's going to pull off that congee in 45 minutes. That's astonishing. Uh, Dr. Sean, he's got his pancake stack there. He's doing a little piping of whipped cream. Pretty, pretty happy. It's out of this world today. I'm amazed. The boring, repetitive way we just reheated those foodstuffs on orbit compared to what they have done. Cool up, Totti. Deep fried ravioli. I have never been in the top three of a mystery box yet. I'm so excited. So I did a smoked salmon parfait with a walnut crumb with a smoked salmon mousse and candied salmon. Matthew, I'm really looking forward to tasting something that came from such simple ingredients that I lived with for half a year.
To me, this is just delicious. It's a surprise, both from taste and texture. Excellent, thank you so much. I've eaten a lot of different food. I can tell you right now, I've never eaten anything that looks quite like this. Mm. You know what? This doesn't work. If you're narrow-minded. It's creamy, it's delicate. I love the crunch. <laughs> this is so innovative and so creative on so many different levels. Great job. Thank you. Good job. Good job, Matthew. Thank you. The next home cook we like to call up made an impressive, savory dish. Bring up your dish. Veronica. Sorry, guys. <laughs> This is a corn and potato-based chicken congee. I also made a Japanese omelet with the dehydrated broccoli and carrots, as well as a fish floss crumble. I really want to be sure and get everything on the spoon here. I don't want to miss one thing. That's a wonderful mixture of everything. It immediately gives you a sense of being back on Earth, a sense of home. Thank you, Colonel. It was an honor cooking for you today. Thank you. Kanji is the ultimate Chinese comfort food. This dish does it for me. The meat is perfectly cooked, very moist. I love the corn. After 166 days in space, I would love to come home to one of these. Thank you, Chef. <laughs> the last dish we'd like to taste is sweet and whimsical. I think I've executed a perfect dish. It's quite innovative, and it tastes really great. Congratulations go to... I have heard Colonel Hadfield's lectures. I've read his book. I've seen him in concert. I want to hear my name so badly. Mary. Yeah. Congratulations. I'm so, I'm so excited. <laughs> Careful on the stairs. OK. <laughs> This is a strawberry raspberry creme brulee, but in a pie shell, so you can eat the whole thing. Even with dehydrated ingredients, you've been able to make the dish look spectacular. Thank you. Absolutely wonderful. Creme brulee portion is very, very light and creamy, but you're able to get the beautiful flavor of those strawberries in there. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> mm, that is unbelievably delicious. <laughs> no one would be able to connect that box of what looked like throwaway food <laughs> into this very rich and delicious dessert you just made. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was a super pleasure. Thank you. You're doing a really good job. Thank you. Doing good, April Lee? Well, the walk is a lot harder than Eric made it look, that's for sure. I've never made food similar to this before, ever. How did I end up on the walk? Use one hand, OK? One hand. Because you know, all you have to do is slide like that, OK? That's all, OK? okay. Alvin's giving him a few pointers on how to use that walk, because that's going to be a really tough piece of equipment to use. My right hand, no. Alvin? I don't care what okay. hand you use, OK? That's a right hand walk. If you okay. turn it around, it's a left hand walk, OK? okay. I can tell you, mastering a walk is not something you learn in hours. It's something you learn in months and years. I am astonished how fast they really picked it up. Are you OK? Yeah. You're going to do great. I get it. I get it right there. I get there. it right there. April Lee is strong and determined, and she is not going to give up. Good luck, Jeremy. Good luck. Pick up the pace. The alumni is arriving. Yes, yes! Oh, my gosh, look. I'm seeing David George, Michael from season two. I am so excited. Hi. Ooh, I'm starstruck. Hi. Hi. I see Dora come in. Kevin. It's just so amazing. Hi. This guy's having a lot of fun over here. I love it. Thank you. There's Lynn. There's David. There's Christopher. Suddenly, it just got real. All right. Red team. Yes, yes chef. Blue team. Yes, yes chef. chef. Service begin. Just sitting here, I can feel the anxiety from last season's restaurant takeover coming back. 
It feels awesome to be on this side of the kitchen, just knowing that we're not sweating, we're not fighting, and we're gonna get to eat some great food. Blue team, one chow mein. Yes, chef. Red team. Yes, chef. Two bibimbap. Yes, chef. chef. Two chop suey. Chef, I have two chop suey. I'm pretty confident, I'm feeling really good. That's very nice. Thank you, chef. Service place, table three. Red team, I want three chop suey. Yes, chef. Come on, height. Service, chop suey up. Service, please. I gotta tell you, the chop suey and the red team looks beautiful. It looks textbook. It's absolutely fantastic. Just the combination of all those flavors, amazing. Okay, everything's looking great. You good, April Lee? I'm good, Mary, I got this. Good girl. You know, what I like to see is Mary, she is up front there, right in the middle of it, watching every dish go out. How many of you cook, Veronica? After this one, I need to do one more, and then I'll pot up. Okay. Red team, I want two more chow mein. Yes, chef. April Lee, two chow mein. Yes, Mary. There is so much pressure being team captain. You're doing amazing, OK? Yeah. I'm just trying to keep it clear in my head what needs to go out and that none of our dishes are going out poorly. Two chops, do we have? All right, very nice. Service, table five. Blue team, one lobster. Say yes, chef. Yes, chef. Got some salt. Thank you. Red team, I want one more chow mein. April Lee? Yo, two more. Thanks, Mary. Look at these women. They're strong, they're confident. They're giving the guys a run for their money, I can tell you that much. Doing okay, Veronica? Doing great. Get the chow mein's out, get the chow mein's out. One chow mein coming up, Mary. Number 12. Guys, we're doing so well, okay? April Lee, you're kicking so much butt. Come on, let's go, come on, come on. Here you go, chef, two chow mein. Did you taste it? I did. Good. Service, please. Jeremy, come on. Last one. That's the last one. You're behind. Come on. Last order of chow mein. Look better than the last one. Nice one. Nice one. Woo! Service, please. Number 12. All right, you're done. Thank you, chef. We just took over one of the busiest restaurants in Toronto. I got so much lipstick on your toe. What an amazing experience. I can't believe we pulled it off. The presentation side goes down first because that's the nice clean pan. If you overheat the pan, you'll have a very leathery crust to the meat. You want to be hot enough to sear it, but not so hot that you end up scorching it or drying it out. Very, very important. We'll finish it off in the oven. All his movements are calculated. Everything has a thought process behind it, and it's just so cool to see him cook. To make the parsnip puree, very simple. In the pot, I have vegetable stock, cream. Once it's cooked, we add to our blender. I have never made a puree before. He makes it look so easy, but I'm aware how hard all these techniques are. Work that through, making sure that there are no lumps, no unpulverized pieces of that beautiful puree. Plating. So the first thing to go down will be the puree, which you can see how smooth that is. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous beluga lentils. There will be a little bit of negative space on either side, but for me, that provides balance. Cut the chop. So now we're exposing the beautiful cook on that meat. Mm -hmm. Food has to look beautiful on a plate from a chef's perspective, but it has to make sense for the guest who has to eat it. I think I'm a good plater already, but after seeing his thought process behind plating, it's life-changing. Everything has a purpose. Done. Now it's time to go back to your stations. That is really, really, really awesome. The importance of perfect searing is so that you seal in the juices and also so that it presents really well on a plate. I'm making a pan seared duck with a uh, blackberry red wine sauce, fondant potatoes, and uh, caramelized white onion puree. I love mystery box challenges just because I can use my creative mind. If I can serve the judges food that they haven't seen before, I've done my job. Woo. 30 minutes! You have 30 minutes left. I am making a New York strip loin, acorn squash puree, as well as a play on a teriyaki sauce. My advantage is I know what world-class food is. So I spent a lot of time in Japan a couple months ago. I went on a food trip, and I want to bring out those same flavors that I experienced there. Veronica knows so much about food, but Veronica's a busy lawyer. I have a lot more experience in the kitchen. I'm making a seared New York strip loin. I'm going to do a potato and leek puree, and I think it's going to be good. I'm so thrilled. I have never made a puree before, so I hope they like it. I have a New York strip loin, and underneath is acorn squash and sweet potato puree. And 
nicely seasoned steak. It's nicely cooked. The puree is absolutely wonderful when it is that creamy and light and beautifully seasoned. The puree has a wonderful gold background to it, but uh, I do feel it's sort of one step away from being fully complete. Microgreens, that might have done it, just to give it one additional pop of color. Overall, you had a great idea, and you pulled most of it off. Thank you, Chef. See on the beef? I think it's perfectly done. It's well seasoned. Keep it simple. The puree, absolutely perfect, nice and silky. All the flavors, they all come together. It's almost world class. Thank you, Chef. The second dish we like to see was made by home cook, who is no stranger to elegant plating. Please bring your dish forward. Matthew. <laughs> I feel really confident about this dish, and I think it's a winner. So we have a pan-seared duck, fondant potatoes, with a caramelized onion puree. You make me really proud. You have this ability to put food on a plate like a professional. Thank you. Let's give this a taste. Hmm. The duck is delicious, great flavor. The only misstep is the fat is not rendered down properly. You should have cooked that down more. Thank you, Chef. Dish looks like almost like an artist's palette. Gorgeous. Let's see how the flavors work together. Intelligent flavors. That onion puree really stands out. Beautiful and smooth, but deep and complex. Well done. Thank you, Chef. I've never felt as confident about a dish in this competition yet. The third and final dish that we'd like to taste was made by Mary. What? It is a steak and potatoes dinner, but I've elevated it. I did a, a seared New York strip loin, a potato and leek puree with a shallot red wine reduction and some of the canor beef stock. The meat, it's pretty rare. Mm -hmm. When I did eat meat, I liked it very pink. It astonishes me that you're able to season meat this well and not taste it. Mary, here to inspire you is your mother, Myra, your boyfriend, Aaron, and your aunt, Joni. Mary! Oh, my gosh! Oh, my gosh! I'm so happy to see my mom. I miss her. Hi, Mom! Oh, my God! Matthew, all the way from Calgary, your mother, Arlene, your father, Michael, and from BC, your partner, Stephen. My family's in the Master of Canada kitchen. Seeing my mom, I instantly cry because she's crying, and I know how proud of me she is. Even my dad's crying, and my dad never cries. Ah! Veronica, all the way from Hong Kong, your father, Alan, your mother, Lily, and from Vancouver, your sister, Alethea. My mom has been an inspiration for me in the kitchen. I've had many challenges where I hear my mom's voice, but my dad's just a real inspiration to me in life. He's taught me about how to just be a person. <gasps> Yes. <laughs> Jeremy, from Winnipeg, your sister Jennifer, and your nieces Gianna and Sophia. Without my sister's family taking me in after the fire, I would be homeless. So I can only repay my sister by being a good uncle and uh, being a good brother to her. We're working with noodles, Daddy. What kind of meat do you think I should use? Beef. Beef. If you love food and you want to learn about food, you go to the St. Lawrence Market. This is so awesome. We haven't been shopping as a family for ages. Look at all this stuff. Look at all that. 
There are so many things to look at, so many different types of meats and vegetables. Brisket, brisket, do you have brisket? I have not been shopping with my family since high school. My mom is very good at picking up produce. So mom, I really love your adobo, and I think I'm going to elevate it. I'm going to make a quail adobo. My mom has actually never even tried my food. Don't forget the rice. Yes, we have to have rice. rice. I want to show them my version of Filipino food. I think I'm going to do a take on the family vacations when Nana lived down in South Carolina, like chicken and waffles almost. Oh, we always oh, yeah, had them on the drive down. Place, right? We love breakfast for dinner in my house. OK, guys, what do you think if I make your favorite, kare kare? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Kare kare is an oxtail stewed in peanut butter with Chinese eggplant and bok choy. We need ginger. We need hot chilies. I need lemon. Kale. Lemon's right there. Go! My boyfriend Aaron has lost a little bit of weight. He's literally been eating carrots since I've been gone. I think we got everything we need, guys. Yay! Thanks for your help! I love cooking for my nieces. I definitely needed this morale boost. I'm going to use it to get to the end. Hi there, Matthew. Hi there, Chef. This is the first time you've made a Filipino-based dish for us in this competition. This is about showing you guys our progression, and this is something I grew up on. Arlene, how do you think it's looking from up there? It's looking great, actually, and I'm so happy. That's fantastic. You're smelling delicious from down here. <laughs> I'm hungry. Well, good luck with that. Great. Thank, Thank you, you, Chef. Matthew. It'll be beautiful, Chef. I'm making a corn butter to go with my waffle. Having my family here, I am rejuvenated, and I want to show off. Homemade butter. You got this, Mary. This is looking pretty darn good. Come on. I only make butter for the people that I love. This is so intense. I'm pulling noodles in the Master Chef Canada Kitchen. Pulling noodles is a lost art. There's a lot of manpower, a lot of technique, a lot of skill. My dad has not seen me do this yet, so I'm excited to show him. Pulling noodle is a real craft. Chef spends years learning how to do it. They take apprenticeships, actually, learning from the masters in Hong Kong. Top three's on the line. I would never take this kind of risk normally in such an important cook, but today I'm doing it. The one common denominator among these three home cooks is that they never take the easy route. They always push themselves. OK. Matthew. Hi, Chef. Top three, top yeah. three. Top three, it's an amazing feeling, Chef. How does this dish show us your journey? I'm going to show off all the techniques that I've learned. I'm going to butter poach char. I've never had butter poach Arctic char before, so this wow. will be a first time for me. No and I'm sure it'll be a first time for a lot of the 13 chefs in there. Wow, no pressure, Chef. <laughs> yeah, they're expecting your very best. Yeah, Chef. And so are we. Thanks, okay. Chef. I want to show off today. Yum. Butter poaching char? I've never heard of that before. It's an extreme risk, but I love to take risks in this competition. Oh, gorgeous. Let's talk. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Hi there, Mary. Hi, Chef. So, trip down memory lane with these 13 <laughs> ingredients? Uh, it is, definitely. So, how do you plan to cook the pickerel? So, I'm doing a take on, on fish and chips. Fish and chips do not sound elevated and sophisticated given the audience that you're cooking for today. I'm going to do a little light batter with some of the, the Pinot Grigio. I'm also doing a blueberry zucchini tomato ketchup. Wow. And instead of capers in my tartar sauce, I'm doing a pickled lentil. When you look at the plate, it won't seem like fish and chips. So I'll let you carry on and thank look you. forward to trying your reinvented fish and chips. Perfect. Thank you so thank much, Thank you, Mary. Chef. Good luck. 15 minutes. You should be plating soon. I only have 15 minutes left, and that's less than a minute per plate but I'm going to get everything on the plate if it's the end of me. Oh, I'm so sweaty. I'm really worried. I don't have time. Uh, look at those plates from Matthew. Absolutely stunning. He's got it all figured out. Look, one piece at a time. He's going down the line, 16 plates. I'm the strongest plater here, and this is going to get me into the finale. Yeah, she needs to hustle. She is really up against the clock here. You have five minutes left! They're all feeling the pressure. You can see it in their face. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm really worried about Jeremy's gnocchi. It doesn't look like it's going to be enough for 16 portions. Not going to have enough. Fuck. One minute, the server will be picking up the plates. There's something about Mary. Well, she won't give up. Look at Jeremy. The servers are ready to pick up Jeremy's plate, and he's not ready to go.
We're all fighting for those two spots, and uh, I worked as hard as I could, and I tried my best to get everything on the plates. I was ready to give up, but I'm really happy with the fact that I got done. I want this. <laughs> um, I really want this. I can't believe I just did that. It was so hard, but um, this is what I love to do, and I can't believe I got to serve all those amazing chefs. I want to be them someday, so it's a, it's a really big honor for me. Matthew, please describe your dish. I made a butter poached Arctic char with pickled veg, carrot puree, and crispy char skin. Thank you. Thank you. And bon appetit, everyone. I tell you, beautiful presentation, nice use of space. This is one of his best presented dishes. Let me correct you, this is the best one he's presented. This looks beautiful. Beautiful little ribbons of zucchini. Nice to see he has a crispy char skin there, which will add yes. a nice crunch to it. Yes. Next up is Mary. Mary, please describe your dish. I did my take on fish and chips. Underneath, I did a tartar sauce, and I did a tomato blueberry ketchup for you. Thank you very much, Mary. Thanks so much. Enjoy. You're excited for this one. <laughs> Beautiful looking plate. The aroma coming off this is absolutely spectacular. I've got to be honest, I was worried about the idea she's doing fish and chips, but she's elevated it. Yeah. Really unique dish. Connie D'Souza. How did you feel about Mary's dish? I loved Mary's dish. I loved her creativity with the pickled lentils and the tartar sauce. And honestly, I thought I would hate the blueberry ketchup, but it was so savory and really smoky and delicious. Really well done. I'd hire her for sure. Awesome. Robert Reynolds, what are your impressions of Mary's fish and chips? I love the presentation. Being from England myself, I grew up on fish and chips. The fish is perfectly cooked in the middle. My only thing is that the ballast is a little too thick for, for the amount of fish that's there. The fish was perfectly done, and the tartar sauce with the lentil, that was fantastic. I think if it comes to speed, then that's what's going to set me apart from Matthew. Nice, Jeremy. It's been five minutes, and Jeremy has, like, three things done. So fast. It kind of scares me about the finale, because if Jeremy's cooking next to me, I better speed it up. So right now, they both seem to be working on their shoe pastry. Jeremy's already got his piped out in the silicone mold. And don't forget the coconut assembly, because that has to be put right on top of the shoe pastry. And then as it bakes, it melts over the top, forming a beautiful-looking crust to it. Almost like a crunchy glaze. Matthew tends to get a little flustered when the pressure is on, and that could be his weakness here. Could this be a case of the tortoise and the hare? It could quite easily be that. Be just a little bit behind in his timing. Jeremy is fast, and speed is important, but execution matters a lot more. They're both cutting the grapefruit croutons for their chocolate banache. You can see that Matthew is cutting his very slow and carefully. Matthew's got the delicate touch when it comes to working with pastries. Jeremy, on the other hand, whilst he's got speed, he can be a little bit clumsy and clunky at times. OK, you babies get crispy, man. Get crispy. Now he's piping his lime mousse filling into the shoe pastry. There will be a moment of truth when we cut into that shoe pastry, because the middle needs to be fully packed with that wonderful mousse. Lime zest. I'm not sure if I have enough lime in the mousse. I just don't know. Five minutes, five minutes left. Matthew started plating his first dessert. I don't think Jeremy has started plating anything yet. What else do I need? The only time I'm going to slow down is when I need to gather my thoughts for plating. This pressure test is all about details. The margin of error is zero. I got all my components done. Now I just has to look good. Tarragon, cilantro. Matthew is actually pulling ahead. This is a classic tortoise and hare. Geez, Matthew. Matthew's plating from the beginning has been just ridiculously out of everyone's league. It's so amazing to have watched, but it's also terrifying. Ooh. One minute, you're one minute up. This is unbelievable. 
birthday. It looks so beautiful. It's do or die. It's either me or Jeremy goes home, and I don't want to go home. This pressure on me is making me cook at my best right now. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands up. Two men. Oh. Mary has been so good with meat, I sometimes forget she's a vegetarian. When I'm cooking meat, I need to go by eye and smell and feel. This pressure is insane. As I'm shucking the oysters, I am so full of adrenaline right now that holding the oyster knife is nearly impossible. Mary is struggling with those oysters big time. In the pandemonium, I realized that I didn't take my beef out of the oven. That meat has continued to cook. Mary's looking frazzled at those steaks. I don't think she's happy. I'm really nervous that I've accidentally overcooked my meat. I am panicking. That doesn't look like medium rare to me. You don't know it until we cut into it. It's going to be the moment of truth. So this is my take on surf and turf. It's a seared beef tenderloin with fried oysters and an arugula and sea asparagus pesto. It's a beautifully composed plate on every level, but I know right now you're absolutely agonizing, wondering what is happening inside this piece of meat here. I am just cringing, waiting to see the center. Perfect, medium. All right, let's dig in. Mary, the ingredients that you chose to put on this dish, I think were well thought out, they work together, and it's a fun play on surf and turf. The oyster, briny, salty, added that wonderful savory pop. A lovely, thoughtful, excellently executed dish. Thank you. Mary. Each individual component was perfect. The leek onion ring, I mean, that is genius. The uh, pesto, sea asparagus, something very unique and something I would be proud to serve in my restaurant. Thanks very much. You know, Mary, I think you found your niche. Taking the old school and bringing it to the new school. It's such a beautifully composed plate in terms of the combination of flavors, presentation, the sea asparagus with the arugula and a pesto. That's the first time I've ever had those two together, and they work brilliantly. It's pretty outstanding. It really is. Thank you. Look what Jeremy's doing. He's layering flavor after flavor after flavor. That's going to be exciting to eat. I'm running to get the ice cream. The galleries are looking in amazement right now. They must be really jealous because we get to eat this, and they don't. I am so happy with my final dish. This dessert is beautiful, and it's exactly how I wanted it to look. I've never plated a dessert this beautiful before. This dessert shows how far I've come. We find ourselves in a very difficult situation, because this is the closest competition we have ever seen. This was about the entire process, but they were both very good, very creative, very innovative. So I'm torn right now. I think without doubt, it is the toughest. Jeremy started off with the bison tataki, and then that modern sushi bowl. And then finally, that beautiful comfort dessert with all those southeastern tropical flavors, with memories of his mother. My menu may be a little ambitious, but you gotta reach for the stars. The title is gonna be mine. I think I deserve it, and I think I've proved it.
Mary took us on a Canadian road trip. She started off with an elevated take on borscht, which was delicious. And then she moved into a beautiful take on surf and turf, served with crispy oysters, crispy leeks, that potato and onion puree. And then she moved into that beautiful blueberry and corn dessert. I'm going to win this because I know my flavors and I, I finally have a clear culinary voice. It's a tita tata, a couple of missteps in each course. If you had to eat one of those three course meals, again, which one would it be? Mary or Jeremy? If I could pick both, I would. Mary. Did it. That's a wonderful job. Every good emotion that anyone in the world has ever felt is me right now. <laughs> this trophy represents everything I've learned and everything that is about to happen. I'm the first lady Master Chef Canada. Yes, it's me. Mary really deserves it. I'm happy for her. I made it this far, and I'm still really proud of what I did. Being second ain't so bad. Oh my God! I know my dad is watching me, and I know that he's here with me. And I know he's proud. 